before this video starts, you'll see that I've actually got adverts on my videos now. So I want to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody because that means that I should at some point soon start generating a little bit of revenue, which is going to make working on everything both over here on the bench and here on the van so much easier. So thank you everybody that's watched the videos and clicks on all different bits and bobs of mine to, uh, to help. So thank you. Let's get on with it. Hello internet. This is a video on how to make your shit subs a bit louder. Money's tight. The world's in a really bad place. No one's got any money. So as long as you've got some basic tools, I'm going to show you how to impress your mates and maybe get laid. I can't, I can't help you get laid, especially if you're ugly. Take yourself to your local DIY shop. Complain, because they've put these stupid coin things on the trolley. Fucking ridiculous. Then feel really smug, because you actually have a pound. I was gonna say, then buy your jigsaw blades, but these two are 13 quid. Go to Screwfix. Oh, Adam, what are we actually doing? Well, we're gonna build a box because the box that your subs came in is probably shit. And this is because the boxes that manufacturers give you is actually bloody terrible. It's always within like super safe specs so they're going to get at least less claims on warranty and that's what you just don't want. Um, so at the end of the day what you need to do is just change the enclosure that your sub is in. Uh, nine times out of ten it'll work out a bit better so long as you're not a complete chimpanzee with a hammer. Which I am but I've taught myself to be a very well trained chimpanzee with a hammer. So grab a tape measure, go out to your car and measure how much space you've got to work with and then put it in this calculator and then from there you'll be able to work out roughly what sort of size you need. As a rule, I normally go with about 1.5 cubic foot for a 10, 2.4 cubic foot for a 12, 4 cubic foot for a 15 and 6 cubic foot for an 18. Obviously double that if you've got multiples of the same size sub. Once you've worked out what size your box is going to be and what tuning you want for it, you're going to have to work out how long your port's going to be. Now, generally as a rule of thumb for port area, I go for about 8 square inches of port area per cubic foot for a smaller sub, say up to about 500 watt. Anything up to about 1000 watt, I go for 10 or anything really big, maybe push to 11, maybe 12. But obviously the bigger the port, the longer your port's going to have to be, so bear that in mind. Think of a port like a windpipe. The more air you need to get down it, the wider your windpipe needs to be. So take that into account when deciding how big your port is going to be. Because obviously the more air your sub can move in each stroke, the bigger your port's going to need to be. Disclaimer, I accept no responsibility for any subs that are broken as a result of this video. Then what you do is you make the guy at B&Q cut the wood and do all the messy stuff. Once you've done that, you've got to walk around the shop making really bad puns. Like look at this. It's adorable. I literally can't believe I've been roped into this again. That's a bit of shit. Where the fuck did the sun go? And this is why you shop around. Jigsaw blades and sanding pads were, uh, I think, 27 quid in B&Q. Just got them both for a tenner in Screwfix. I've just walked out of the car park and my car's in the car park. Just going to jump this wall. Oh, oh I'm so old. So the reason I'm drawing around the outside is because MDF is essentially just sawdust glued together with leprechaun jizz, so I don't really want it to split. If I draw around the outside with the thickness of the same piece of wood, I'm going to know exactly where the screws have to go, to give me the best chance of getting a decent bite and not having the wood split. So something I have learned, and this might sound obvious to a lot of people, 
is to pre-drill the holes, especially when you build on your own, because when you've got bigger panels like this, these are about three foot, three and a half foot long, they can steer themselves a fair bit. Um, so once you pre-drill the holes, you can actually put screws just in them, and then it makes the whole thing a lot easier, rather than having to balance it with your knee and your peak, uh, just like that. Once you get to this sort of point, it's the bit where you want to start drawing where your port's going to go on the inside, because then you're going to know exactly where to put your pieces of wood. And uh, if there is any like slippage or bendage, you can just sort of tap, 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 and then screw it in. And it's going to be absolutely fucking lovely. So because this box is going to be for a pair of 12s, we had a couple of options. We could either do a port going down the side, going across the back, and have one and two. Um, but for this example, what I'm going to do is have the port going through the middle and splitting. This part of it where you've got the three, the four sides together is where it's obviously most accessible. So I'm going to draw in the middle port. Once it goes back into focus, draw in the middle port now. Um, you'll see that it starts at five inches wide in the middle and goes to two and a half inches either side. That's annoying. Obviously one of my lines weren't straight, so the screws didn't go in straight. That's really quite frustrating. I'll try and fix that now. Well, these things happen.
guess I'll get the seat down as well. See it around, please.